Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police with Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog breaking the trail in the relentless pursuit of lawbreakers in the wild days of the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush as Sergeant Preston with his wonder dog Yukon King meets the challenge of the Yukon. This is the Yukon, the territory patrolled by Sergeant Preston, where men suffer from nature's insensible cruelty as well as from enemies of their own making, ignorance, pride, and lust for gold. Teslin Crossing, a supply base some 50 miles north of Whitehorse and a few miles south of a summer encampment of Chilkat Indians. Do you know who he is, Blue One? Him a lack, Chief's son. Sick and feverish. You better take him back to the crossing and have Doc Warren take a look at him. Tell the chief the police are taking care of his son. Come on, Chief. Pretty bad, Sergeant. The last stages of diphtheria. Can nothing be done? Tracheotomy is his only chance. You know what that is? Well, it's cutting a hole in the windpipe and inserting a hollow tube so he can breathe. Good. You've just passed your examination as a nurse and can qualify. I'll show you what instruments to sterilize while I prepare the patient. More chloroform. I was afraid it would be too late. I believe you said he was the chief's son. Yes, he is, Doc. Son of Kasani, chief of the Chilcot tribe. In camp about 20 miles up the river. I suppose he'll have to be notified. Yes, and it's my unpleasant duty to tell him. I want to bury him according to their tribal rights and customs. So I'll take him back myself and explain the cause of death. I'll lend you a pack horse. But be careful, Sergeant. This boy died of diphtheria. He might run into an epidemic. Well, that's another reason why I want to go, Doc. Making out reports on the health of the territory is one of my duties. If there is an epidemic, be sure and let me know at once. I have plenty of serum. I've kept it on hand ever since I got caught short in the plague of 95. Well, you hear from me if you're needed. If not, you know a lack was just an isolated case. Mm. Kasani? Sergeant Preston, welcome to our camp. Thanks, Yukesha. I didn't know you were here. I thought you were still in Whitehorse. Alak and I returned for the summer to teach what we learned at the white man's school. That's fine. I'm afraid I have bad news for Alak's family. Alak dead? I brought him home with me. I thought you'd want it that way. Alak was sick with a swelling throat we called diphtheria. Found him on the road. What is he doing away from camp? I'll like go to white doctor. He's sick. Other people sick too. I like not die of sickness and throat. I like killed by white man doctor. White man doctor make bad medicine. No good. Klukwan make bad medicine. Spirits do not listen. People get more sick. All time worse. Worse. No, Kisani. Not so. Come, I show. Look, Kasani, the mark where knife go in. I like die of knife and throat. I see white man doctor kill him. Red coat there, he see too. Is this true, Red coat? 
Partly, Chief. But it didn't happen the way your medicine man says. Dr. Warren performed an operation to save the boy's life. The sergeant is telling the truth, Father. They had to do that to a lock so he could breathe. Make him die to breathe? My son and daughter listen too much to white men. I listen too much to son and daughter. We will bury my son in the old way of the tribe. We will return to the old way. The new way is not good for my people. What about the sick ones, Father? Klukwan make medicine for his people. Let sick people go to him. His medicine is worthless, Chief. Your people need serum, and if they don't get it, this disease will spread and kill many of you. White man doctor bring knives, needles, stick them in people, kill people quick. Red coats not our friends, Kasani. They kill us. That's not true, Klukwan, and you know it. I no lie. I medicine man. I speak truth. And you're an ignorant man and a danger to your people. I'm sorry you're stubborn, Klukwan. But I'm getting the doctor. You must understand, Chief. It's my duty to protect the people of this territory. All the people. Whether they want protection or not. I'll be back with the doctor this evening. Stop, Redcoat! You're a prisoner! Talking. <coughs> oh, want any trouble? Chief, if your braves let me through. Death is already in this camp, and I don't wish to bring more. I came as a friend, and I want to leave as a friend. Yes, Chief. Go to the lodge, Akisha. Look what you have done. Look, Quan, you are a fool. Now Redcoats will come with chains and guns, looking for vengeance. Chief Kasani is growing old. His mind is as feeble as his body. Redcoat cannot bring soldiers if he is prisoner. Is one red coat something to fear? More will come, looking for him. Uh, if they come, we will let them know that he lives. And that he will die if they fight us. Does Chief Kasani think like warrior or like woman? Make him prisoner. Yeah, we know. I told the guard I come to curse you. I must speak roughly for his benefit. I understand. I have the sickness too, Sergeant. Oh, no, you Kesha. The soreness is in my throat. It started like this with the lock. You must go to the doctor. No, you must bring the doctor to us. That is why I've come to free you. You must bring the doctor here with serum. For the others, more of my people are getting sick. I can't bring the doctor here to Yakesha. He'd be killed. We must help them. Even if Dr. Warren were willing to risk it, your people in their ignorance may refuse his help. Then do what you will. But at least I must free you. This is a sad day for Kasani. White man take my son from me. Now he take my daughter. Sickness took a lack, father. Sickness will take me too. I have it here. You? You bring much evil to my camp, Redcoat. Gluk one say white men have put spell on us. Foolish talk, father. We move camp tomorrow. We go far north away from white man's curse. We take you. So more Redcoats do not follow and kill. I feel sorry for you, Kasani. Taking me along as prisoner won't protect you. Your real protection is common sense. And you're leaving that behind you. What you're taking is sickness and death. And you'll spread it all around you, everywhere you go. He speaks truth, Father. Klukwan lead us all to death. And you, the chief, follow like little child. Go to my lodge.
You're a stubborn man, Kusani. You're killing your daughter. Killing her as surely as if you plunged your knife into her back. Behold. It is no use, Group One. Noise and magic bottles will not help. My throat. Group One, she is worse. You say you make pain go away. You make her sleep. Do what you say, Kluk Wan. I get skull of Taiwan bad god. Big medicine. Very big. Strong in war. This is sickness, not war. A white man make war on us with sickness. Big bad god, big bad medicine for white man. I get him. Father. Rest your Keshe. Do not talk. I shall die, Father. I shall die before the sun comes up. No, daughter. Klukwan bring Taiwan bear god. Very strong. But, Father, I die. It is the Chilkat law that dying ones may say farewell to friends. It is so. Bring Sergeant Preston. He is no friend. He is, Father. He is. No, Red Coat not come here. I die. It is my last wish. It is the law. Bring him here. You raise much dust, Kluk Wan. You make throat worse. Your Kesha not believe. Evil spirits of white men cloud her mind. She turn her back on all ways of her people. She die like a lack. Quick one admits he can't help her, Chief, and he's right. Only the doctor can help her now. Please let me go after him. For her sake, and for the sake of the other sick ones, before it's too late. No, you bring more redcoats. If I did bring the police, it'd be simply to help you in your time of trouble. I give you my word, Kasani. I give you my word. I'll, I'll, I'll come back with only Dr. Warren. No. Then send one of your own people. I don't care who you send or how you do it. But get the doctor up here. Please, Father. Tell someone to go for a doctor. No one go for a doctor, all afraid of Kluk one. Preston had fought many battles in the Yukon, but never before had he fought anything that looked so hopeless as this battle against ignorance and superstition. There's one way left, Kasani. I could send my dog, King. He's been trained to carry messages. Please, Father. Bring dog. All right, release me so I can write. You catch your right. Kasani not trust red coat marks on paper. All right. This is a notebook and pencil in my pocket. Can you manage your cashier? You tell me. It's 
It's all right if I tell her what to write? I listen. Dr. Warren. Please come at once. Hello, fella. Release him. Remove that muzzle. He'll be gentle now that he's with me. Easy, boy. These are friends. That's a boy. Here, King. Come here. Let's sit. Come on. Sit. Give him the message. Message, King. Take message to Dr. Warren. Pick it up. Pick it up. Take message to Dr. Warren. Go. Go, King. A message. Make fire go quick. Get water hot. I'm afraid she'll die before the doctor gets here. I have seen others die of the swelling throat. It is too late. There's still one way left to save her, Kasani. Cut a small hole in her windpipe. Insert a hollow goose quill so she can breathe. Like Dr. Cutthroat of my son? Yes. Only a lack was weak from the long walk, and the operation came too late. No, she will die like a lack. Without the operation, she's certain to die. With it, she has a chance to live. A better chance than a lack. You do this thing, Redcoat? I'll try. I've seen it done. I am old man. It is hard for old man to find new gods, new ways. It is hard to know which way to walk. Heart pull one way, mind pull other way. Red coat, you may cut with knife. Kasani, watch. Yakesha die, red coat die. Yes? Untie me. Now this will hurt you, Kesha, when I make the incision. Goose quill is notched. It should let her breathe. The feather will keep it from going down her throat. Now she'll sleep. I'm sure she'll recover. The doctor gets here soon. I go tell people. Yeah, Kesha, she all right. All right. Look, man. He goes to kill white man doctor. Look, one gone to kill doctor. Guan. Medicine man leave before sun come up. Him no one other doctor here. King, 
the horse. The sheriff, go, King. King, watch the horse. You want to lose the serum and supplies. One, you live. You find the police aren't murderers like you think. You all right, Doc? Yes. Your supplies are safe. Your horse is tied a half a mile down the road. Thank heaven. You know, Preston, they ought to include a course of Indian fighting in every school of medicine. <laughs> you be all right, Doc? From now on, she'll be getting better by the minute. It's a good job you did there, Sergeant. For a policeman, you mean? Go be modest, Preston. That would be a good job for a doctor. And King was as efficient as a government courier. Uh, are they already outside? Well, the chief spoke to his people, but he's powerless to force them to take the serum. We might as well go see. All those who want the medicine to prevent the sickness of the swelling throat, please step up. White man medicine, good. Put one help white doctor, yes? Put one learn white doctor magic. How do you like the nerve of this hoodlum? After he tried to kill us. You know, I've been thinking about this, Doctor. I think Luke Wan's a very smart medicine man. And I think he'd make you a very good assistant. On second thought, maybe he would. He could at least keep us in touch with the health of his tribe, couldn't he? Indeed he could. There's proof you speak the truth, Luke Wan. Will you be the first to take the medicine? Come forward. My medicine and white man's medicine work together. Much, much power against sickness. Yes. Well, King, as I diagnose it, this case is closed.
Baker Oats Company presents Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police with his great horse Rex and Yukon King, the Wonder Dog, maintaining law and order in the wild days of the Klondike. Back to the days of the gold rush as Sergeant Preston with his Wonder Dog, Yukon King, meets the challenge of the Yukon. This is the Yukon, the territory patrolled by Sergeant Preston, mecca to the onrushing hordes of gold seekers at the turn of the century, outpost of empire. From its unyielding soil in one year alone came over 17 million in yellow metal. Kilgore, population 67, between North Peaks and Dawson City. Peaceful as the village seemed, there was trouble brewing in the trading post of Ezra Barton. What's the charge of keeping this gold dust in your safe, Mr. Barton? Oh, we don't ask any pay for doing something neighborly here in the Yukon, mister. I keep all the folks gold hereabouts, never cost them a cent. You want to wait out first? I've got it sealed. Thanks. Save yourself the trouble. Oh, goody, look, <laughs> Susan. Sergeant Preston and King coming to visit us. <coughs> there she comes. Uh, we're in uh, kind of a hurry, Mr. Barton, but we need some lumber for a cabin we want. How about it? Well, I've got just the stuff for you out back. You want to see it? You lead the way. Uh, as Master says, we're in a bit of a hurry. Well, I'll be with you in just a minute. Meg, honey, ten store. I gotta show these men some lumber out back. Look, Daddy, it's Sergeant Preston and King. Well, you just keep them company while I'm out back. You better come in now. Right away, Daddy. All right, men, come with me. Let's surprise Sergeant Preston, shall <laughs> we, Susan? <laughs> I saw a friend of ours as we came up, King. Oh, I must have been mistaken, huh? Oh, King! You spoiled it. Susan and I were going to surprise you. Oh, we did, did he? Well, now, I'm afraid nobody can hide from Yukon King. Can they, fella? How's my very special deputy today? Fine, Sergeant. Susan and I were going to have a tea party this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Will you come too, you and King? Well, no, I'm very sorry. That's one tea party we're going to have to pass up. Aren't we, fella? See, we've got our job to do. And uh, we just stopped by to say hello. Oh. I wonder which one of those jars over there has the best candy in it. Oh, the first one. That's peppermint kind. You sure? Mm-hmm. Well, all right. Uh, we'll just sit right here and I'll get that down for you. Now, how about fixing us up with about, uh, oh, say, five cents worth? Okay. Oh, that's not for me. No, that's, uh, that's for my very special deputy. For a tea party, I believe. <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant. Where's your daddy? He's out back with some men. Good. Well, I'll see him on the way out. Just stop by for a minute. I have to be in North Peaks by this evening. But I'll be back in a few days, and we'll have a real good visit. Come on, King. Say goodbye to Meg. Come on. Say goodbye to Meg. Yeah, boy. Well, goodbye, Deputy. I expect you to keep the peace while I'm gone. Come on, King. Good morning, Sergeant Preston. How are you, Whitey? How's the firewood business? Tolerable for this time of year. Tolerable. Any trouble? Everything's fine, Sergeant. Most folks don't hold a man's past to get him around these parts. It'd be a sad state oh. of affairs if they did. Right, Sergeant. So long, Sergeant. Hi, Mr. Barton. Well, hello, Sergeant. Excuse me. Come 
coming to see me. Well, now, isn't that something? Would you like a peppermint? Sergeant Preston gave him to me. Oh, he did, eh? Trying to steal my best girl, that's what he's doing, is he? But he can't tell stories like you can, and he doesn't know about the old mine either. Oh, that's better. Any time you can beat a Mountie at anything, that's pretty good. Is your daddy about? He's busy with some men. I'm tending store. Oh, I see. You think you could lay your hands on a ounce of smoking tobacco and a packet of tea? Mm-hmm. for Susan. Now, what do you suppose ever gave you that idea, huh? I know it, I know it, you can't fool me. Meg, go to your room. Don't blame her, Mr. Barton. I'm the one Meg. All right, Daddy, I'm going. I'm not gonna tell you again, Whitey. I will not have ex-criminals around my daughter, and this is final. I guess you're right, Mr. Barton. I guess I'm just not the proper sort for it. We'll pick up that lumber as soon as we've found a spot for it, Mr. Barton. Sure, sure, anytime. What thunder do you want with that? I was just thinking how much you look like Whitey, the ex-convict, with the handkerchief over your face. doing this job in the daylight. Don't worry. Still midnight to the honest folks of Kilgore. They're all asleep. How much more? This is the last one. Hours. Of course it was Whitey. Don't you think I can believe my own eyes? Besides, here's proof. This bit of wood is his. He was whittling on it right here in this store day before yesterday. Oh, but you said somebody else tied you. Whitey lives by himself. Probably some drifter friend he picked up. Could be a prison pal. It was Whitey, I tell you. Well, he's not at the shack. Mule, cart and all, he's gone somewhere. We've already checked. That proves it. He's probably lit out for the hills. Well, he won't get far, the dirty old skunk. We'd better form a posse. Boys, go get the horses and meet me back here at the store. Say, didn't you say that Sergeant Preston passed through here recently? Yeah, it was day before yesterday. Isn't that right, Meg? Just before Whitey was here, Daddy, Sergeant Preston said he was on his way to the North Peaks and would be back in a day or two. North Peaks, eh? Good. That's only a few hours away. I'll have one of the men ride out after him. And don't you worry, Mr. Barton. We'll get old Whitey. After all, every man jack in this district has a personal interest in catching him. He's cleaned us all out. It's my own fault for ever letting that jailbird set foot in this place. Please, Daddy, don't let them hurt Whitey. He didn't do it. I know he didn't. This way, we'll stick around with the rest and holler until Whitey's caught. Well, then what? Gripe to everybody about our bad luck, amble on, 
with their gold and no Mountie on our trail. It's a cinch. I gotta hand it to you. This is the slickest we've ever pulled. What about this one? Just don't leave it with the duffel bag lying around. Now let's get back to our diggings. Oh, and be sure and act surprised and mad when they come around to tell us that our pokes have been stolen. I will. Now wait a minute, everybody. I've got as much at stake for finding the skunk as you have. But I'm going to say this. It's all going to be done lawful. Uh, Quiet, all of you. I meant what I said. Now, you all know that I've sent for Sergeant Preston. There's only one thing we can do till he gets here. Find that rat, Whitey. Right, but no rough stuff. Come on. Now, we shall have Cassidy's right, man. Two wrongs never made a right. There are three more for the posse. Hold it, guy. Well... Well, what's going on here? Somebody strike it rich? Yeah, somebody struck it rich, Whitey. You. Me? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Hear that, men? He doesn't know what we're talking about. Well, you'll soon learn, mister. Where's my poke? I don't know anything about it. I swear I don't. Ah, hang, it's too good for you. Don't you dare hurt my friend. Don't you dare hurt. Meg, come back here. Oh, no, Meg. It's all right. Nobody's going to hurt anybody. Let me through here. I'm so glad you came, Sergeant. They were going to hurt Whitey. All right, go home, all of you. You too, Whitey. I'll get in touch with you later. Maybe I better explain, Sergeant. I appreciate all the help I can get on a case. But on the way down here, Jackson told me quite a bit about this one. Right now, I'm asking this crowd to break up. You mean you're going to let that crook go free? You're new around here, aren't you? What's your name? Jim Masters. And I have a right to ask. Why'd he stole my poke? Have you got proof of that statement, Masters? I got Mr. Barton's word for it. That's enough for me. Well, it's not good enough for the law, Masters. According to the law, a man is innocent until proven guilty. And if Whitey's guilty, he'll be punished according to the law. Not by any kangaroo court. That's my job. Now, all of you go home. I'll be around later to talk to you. Just a minute, Masters. Where are you staying? Where Oak Creek empties into the lake, with my partner Pringle here. And I'll be up there in about an hour to hear your story. I'll see you at your shack, Whitey. But after I've talked to Mr. Barton. Thanks, sir. We just have to hope, Whitey King. We just have to. After questioning Whitey and searching his shack without finding any evidence of theft, Preston was inclined to believe the old man's pleas of innocence, at least temporarily. He left the woodcutter and hurried to question Masters and Pringle. Pete! Pete! What do you want? Mountie's coming. Start panning. I'll talk to him. Sergeant. Hello. Haven't been here long, have you? Oh, three, four days. Before that? Worked a stream off the porcupine. But when the claim turned up nothing but sand, we moved down here. But why all the questions? We're a couple of the victims, not the crooks. Oh, just routine, Masters. Well, with you on the job, I guess you'll find the gold before long. I hope so. How's it running? Well... Oh, fine, fine. Well, I hope you don't mind if I look around your camp a bit. No, no, help yourself. How much gold was in that poke of yours, Masters? About 40 ounces of dust. Why? Oh, just have to know the amount stolen. Did you arrest Whitey yet? No. 
I haven't enough evidence for a case against him yet. I have to ask you to stay around a while. Both of you. What are you doing that for? You said if we left that stuff lying around, it could send us to jail. It can do the same thing for Whitey. Here, ride out fast and plant it in the old man's shack, where it can easily be found. What for? Preston needs evidence against Whitey, doesn't he? With that, he'll have plenty of it. The gold. Stolen gold. What am I going to do? If I take it back now, they'll never believe me. Nobody'd believe me. Better keep it while I can, until I think how to return it without getting into more trouble. You don't really think Whitey took the gold, do you? Well, Meg, honey, I'm not ready to answer that. You see, a policeman has to consider all the evidence. In that case, Sergeant, I've got your man. That's the duffel bag the thieves took away the gold in. And that's Master's empty poke. What do you think now? I told you Barton had found something. Kind of got the jump on you, didn't he, Sergeant? Uh, where'd you find these, Mr. Barton? Probably right where they've been all the time, under Whitey's mattress. I just had a hunch. What's the matter, Sergeant? Don't you believe him? Oh, I believe you, Mr. Barton. There's still something I'd like to know. Oh? What's that? Why weren't these under Whitey's mattress when I searched his cabin this morning? What did Whitey have to say about this? Well, I, uh, I waited for him, and then I took a quick look around the area. I couldn't find hide a hair of him, thought he might turn up here. And stick his neck in a noose? I say let's hunt him down before he gets too far away. He's probably hiding out somewhere. What, an old man like that? If he tried to hide out, he'd starve to death. Here, put this evidence in your safe, Mr. Barton. I'll pick it up later. Come on, King. Come on. Come on, men. Let's do our own hunting for the old thief. Why? Look. It's Whitey's. So he got the gold after all. But not for long. Come on. <laughs> the Mountie. Let's cut across country. I told you. She led us right to Whitey's hideout. Easy. Maybe the old fox has a gun. Whitey, are you up there? Come help me. Meg, what are you doing here? I heard them talking, saying you were bad. But I know you're not, even if you did have to hide. Bless you, child. You shouldn't have come here. I brought you lots of food and things. Such a person said you'd starve. But you shouldn't have come here. All right, Whitey, reach. The two self-styled prospectors were gone, but the condition of their camp gave them away. 
The sergeant knew that no genuine miner would leave his equipment scattered about exposed to the elements. An ordinary coffee pot cost $14 in the Yukon, and no genuine miner would bother with flower gold, worth less than a few cents a pan. A.J.W. Well, that's Whitey's axe. King, we've got a job to do. Come here, King. Here. Follow, follow. <laughs> Boys, we must find Whitey now. Meg's gone and taken some food with her. Whitey probably put her up to it. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Now, I don't mean to imply he'd hurt her on purpose, but this is rough country. At least I know where to start looking for him. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. You're right, King. These tracks are fresh and moist. <laughs> You brought him some grub, huh? I'm a friend of his. People who aren't friends of Whitey's would like to know where he is. Did you happen to tell anyone he was up here? I don't care what you do to me, but leave her alone. Of course I didn't tell on Whitey. Not even about you being up here? I certainly didn't. Good girl. Then we have nothing to worry about, have we? All right, Whitey, where's the gold? The cover hasn't been off of here in a year. I told you I don't know anything about the gold. You left your axe right by the tree you took the gold out of. You took it with you. You hit it someplace. Where? You leave Whitey alone. Hey, Jim, come here. What is it? I was just... Look who's coming. Mountain. Circle around up there, King. Go. Surrender, masters. You're trapped up there. Bring him out here. Let Preston see him. That ought to slow him down. All right. <laughs> Here, <sir. laughs> Help me! Go. Right, Hello there, masters. Relax, King. All right, you two. I arrest you in the name of the Crown. Nick, what are you all right? Everything's fine now, Sergeant. Oh, I remember that this used to be Whitey's claim before he went to jail. Everything's all right now, Meg, honey. They hid the money in the hollow of an old tree, which I accidentally chopped open. And I brought it up here until I could think of some way of returning it. Barton swore it was Whitey that held him up. Ever notice how much Pringle looks like Whitey with the lower part of his face covered, Cassidy? Well, I'll be. Why, he's right, for sure. But what made you suspicious at first? Well, the way he handled a gold pan. Like he was mixing flapjack batter. And the evidence against Whitey was, uh, well, just a little too pat to be true. I've been a fool, Whitey, for letting a man's past blind me from seeing the kind of man he really is. This is all very well, Sergeant, but where's our gold? Answer me that. Why don't you ask Whitey? Well, I'll be a son of a gun. Oh, Whitey. Oh, Whitey. You're just the smartest ever. And I could use a smart assistant in the trading post, Whitey. If you're willing to work for me. Oh, Daddy. I hope I'll make as good an assistant as King is to the sergeant. Well, hear that nice compliment, King? Well, this case is closed.
Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police with Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog breaking the trail in the relentless pursuit of lawbreakers in the wild days of the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush as Sergeant Preston with his wonder dog Yukon King meets the challenge of the Yukon. This is the Yukon, the territory patrolled by Sergeant Preston. 200,000 square miles of the most beautiful and rugged country on earth. Gold country, invaded by a horde of adventurers ready to risk and dare anything in their fevered search for gold. Last chance, a mining settlement 23 miles east of Dawson late in the summer of 1897. There was great activity in Campbell's trading post. The mail was going out. And address it to Miss Lillian Russell. Hotel Astor, New York City. Rafe, do you really know Lillian Russell? No, but uh, once I saw her picture in the police gazette. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you are, Rafe. All set the mail to Miss Russell. Thanks a lot, Sergeant. As soon as I get another $10,000 in my poke, I'm going to learn to read and write for myself. Good. <laughs> Everything's ready for your inspection, Sergeant. All right. Here you are, Jack. About how long will it take before it's delivered? Well, it'll take me about three weeks to get down to Juneau, if the weather holds. From then on, it's up to Uncle Sam's service. What route are you taking? The usual. And you'll be heading down the Lewis River through Devil's Gorge. That's right. Why? Mm -hmm. We hear there's a lot of fallen rocks in Devil's Gorge. Wouldn't want anything to happen to our mail carrier, now would we? You watch yourself, Jack. Stand back, everyone. They're bringing out the gold. Everything we've worked and suffered for in that chest, Jack, don't let anything happen to it. I'm sure glad you're going along with that, Sergeant. I'm not, Campbell. But don't worry about your gold. It's in good hands. No more experienced mail carrier than Jack Hart. And I'm sending along Constable Gage as an escort. Stay with Jack until the mail is transferred to the riverboat at Fort Selkirk, Gage, and report back to Dawson. Yes, sir. Any more letters? No? Well, close up your pouch and be on your way, Jack. Here, King. Wouldn't they be surprised if they knew they were going to wave goodbye to their gold for good? You talk <laughs> too much. Come on, Meacham's waiting for us out back. What did you find out? You had it figured right, Meacham. The mail's going through Devil's Gorge. Did you inspect the old ore chute there? The one the Collins mine built to get the ore from the top of the hill to the main road. Yeah, it's just like it was made to order for us. But why do we have to go through all this trouble? Why can't we just hold them up? Because this way, the Mountie will be surprised. He won't even know what's going on in that cloud of dust made by the ore chute. I hope he doesn't even have time to draw his gun. Killing a Mountie would be suicide. But you can't blame us if he gets his pretty red coat a little dirty from the dust. I mean it. See that no harm comes to the escort. When the job is over, bring everything up to Greer Summit as planned. Couldn't you find a place easier to get to? Gold is heavy. I hope you're weighed down to your knees with it. Get up in there. They're ready to leave. You better get going. See you at Greer Summit. I always hate to see that last mail go out. It means that winter isn't very far away. Where's the mail carrier? He's gone, Miss Merriam. Oh, but this letter has to go out. It contains a cash order for medicine and instruments that are needed up here. Please, Sergeant. If Dad's order isn't received in Seattle, we won't be able to have the clinic for the miners next winter. Now, calm down, Lucy. Plenty of time to catch Jack Hardy. Just left. Let me have the letter, Doc. Thanks. Oh, so you want to take the letter to Jack Hart, huh? <laughs> well, here you are, boy. Off you go. 
Go ahead. Sergeant, that letter could mean the difference between life and death to a lot of people up here. And you, you entrust it to a dog. Well, just watch him. Now, our timing has got to be perfect, Fox. You pull the stopper on that chute when I give you the signal from there. Then when the dust starts to spread out, be ready to help me push them off the wagon, grab the reins. I'll be ready. And don't hit that wagon, either. Without transportation, we're sunk. And no rough stuff, either. Just push them off the wagon and get the reins. And make sure your handkerchief is tied tight so that you can keep this dust out of your own lungs. They got away clean. Not quite clean. And this is the only shred of evidence they left behind, Gage. Yes, sir, that's all we can find. You say you didn't get a good look at either of the men, in? No, Sergeant. They were on the wagon galloping away with Gage's horse tied behind before we knew what it was all about. That dust lacked a blind at us. Well, Preston, we haven't much to go on. But if those hold-up men escape, we can expect more outrages of this kind. And you know what that means during a gold rush. Yes, I do. Those mail robbers have to be in custody before they reach the border. Well, at least we know where to begin. We'll do our best, sir. Come on, King. There's a terrible blow for us here in Last Chance, especially Doc Merriam. I hear tell the robbers got away as clean as a whistle. You had a shipment of these hats in here last spring, didn't you, Camel? Yeah, made by Ricker Brothers in San Francisco. Guaranteed to fit any man or mule. <laughs> Do you have a record of the men who bought these hats? Well, not unless they didn't pay for them or check. No. Oh. All those hats must have been sold for cash. Thanks, Camel. Who cares about these letters, Meacham? Let's just take the gold and head for the border. That's what I say. The Mounties will catch up with us if we stick around here long enough. Did you brush your footprints after you dumped the wagon like I told you? Sure, sure I did. Well, then we're safe here. This trapper's cabin hasn't been used for years. <laughs> it was built long before the almighty Northwest Mounted Police came into the territory. It's a good spot, all right. Nobody can get to it from the main road without horses. Back way takes too long. Besides, we can spot anybody coming from any direction. We're still wasting time fooling around with these letters. Listen to this. My darling, my heart is plumb swole up with missing you. But when I get back, there ain't nothing that you and the baby can't have. You'll be our queen, and she'll be our little princess. Ah. You fools. This gold won't last forever. But there's a lot of information in those letters about unstaked claims. When this blows over, we'll be able to come back and own half the Yukon. Hey, hey, here's one from old Doc Miriam. It's got cash in it. Hey, that's quite a bundle. I didn't know the old Doc had that kind of money. Says that the money's supposed to be used to buy medicine for the clinic. <laughs> I'll spend it on medicine, okay? Whiskey's medicine, ain't it? <laughs> Give me that. I needed to buy supplies. I'll be back this afternoon, then we'll head for the border. You keep your eye on things till I get back. Give me a hat. Mine's lost. Why, you jackass. Where did you lose it? If I knew, it wouldn't be lost.
At the scene of the robbery, Preston quickly picked up the trail of the stolen wagon. Chipped stones made by the wagon wheels and hoof marks on the ground clearly indicated the direction the holdup men had taken. At a point where the trail started to rise steeply in rough country, Preston found that the wagon tracks stopped abruptly among a confusion of hoof marks. An old Dodge running off riderless horses to create a false trail. From now on, it was up to the great dog King, who followed criminals by air scent rather than ground scent. The telltale scent of a man will linger in the air for several days, clinging to shrubs, tree trunks, and even to moss-covered rocks. <laughs> something, old boy, huh? You all right, King? Give yourselves up in the name of the crown. I don't like shooting at Mounties. What should we do, invite him in for a cup of tea? It's him or it's us, and it's 20 years for us. That's what you get for robbing the mail. Come on with your hands up. That doesn't look very good. You gotta get me to a doctor. You gotta take care of me. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of both of us. Get you to a doctor and me across the border, safe and sound. Don't shoot. We surrender. Advance to me, but keep your hands up. Many of you in the cabin. Just me and my partner. He's wounded bad. That's why I surrendered. He needs a doctor. <laughs> to think we fell for an old Indian trick like that. Turn around. Head for the cabin. a lot of blood. Looks to me like he's dying. Bullet severed an artery. Tourniquet I made gives him a good chance if I can get him to a doctor soon. My horse is on the trail below. You wouldn't even be able to get him down to your horse without my help. That's a steep 50-foot drop out there. That's why we picked this place. All right. I'll remove your handcuffs. You can help me with your friend. <laughs> I thought you Mounties were supposed to be smart. I don't want to do anything for anybody but myself. What are you getting at, Boker? Well, you want to save a man's life? I want to save my own skin. Let's make a deal. You can't make deals with the law in this territory, Boker. His life is in your hands. It's up to you. Uh, uh, well, how about it, Sergeant? Uh, well... I thought you'd see it my way. Now, you and me can carry poor old Foxy down, put him on your horse on the trail. Then you and Fox head out in one direction, and I'll take the other. 
course, you'll have to let me take a little bit of that gold along for expenses, all right? What is this? Don't move. Watch him, King. Oh, sure. Sure, you're going to get that gold back, all right. That way you'll get your promotion. What do you care about a dying man? His life is in your hands now. I gave you a chance to save him. Remember that. Take it easy, Foxy. Uh, easy now, easy. You'll never make it. That's a 50-foot drop out there. Stay on guard, King. Watch him and I'll be back. Are you going to be all right? If I can get you on my horse, I'll take you to a doctor. Stay on guard, King! See there? Your master's left you behind. Why don't you go home? Go on home! I think you're pretty smart, huh? Well, I'm smarter than any dog. Mind if I stretch my legs a little bit? Don't growl at me. We're friends. Partners. Get down. Get down. Doc Merriam's cabin's less than a mile now. I, I come from Jersey. It's green. All green. Mountains are green. No go. Fresh milk. You gotta put me down. It's the spring just ahead. We'll rest there. Come on, Rex. Howdy, Sergeant. Got trouble? I was hoping you were Doc Merriam. This man's been hurt. A gunshot wound? Say, he's not one of the mail robbers by any chance. He's a man that needs a doctor. Last chance will be mighty happy to know that you've recovered their gold. Help me get him down off the horse. He's passed out again. Right. Be as easy as possible. Yeah. He's in bad shape. Right. What's that arm? Yeah. I'm down over here by the trail. There's a spring nearby. Here, I'll take him. Easy, Fox. Sergeant? Yes. Where is it, Fox? Waterside. Waterside. Water. I'll get you some. Foxy. Foxy! Where's the gold? Where's the gold? Cabin. Any Mounties up there? No. What about Boker? I guess he's taken his last claim. Go down the road and see if you can find Doc Merriam. You know his cabin. Sure. Glad to help. And tell him to get here fast! Well, there's no sense of us sitting here staring at each other. Let's get a little shut-eye. Mm. All right, so I wasn't sleeping. 
Tourniquet seems to be doing the job, Fox. Thanks. Sergeant, I don't want to die with this robbery on my conscience. Now, take it easy, take it easy. I've sent for the doctor. You won't get him. That was Meacham. Meacham? Yeah, he's one of us. He planned the robbery. He made me tell him the gold was still in the cabin. No doctor. No doctor. You get the doctor all right, just to keep me from getting suspicious. And if he's smart, he'll go back to the cabin for the gold. Hey, Doc! Doc Mann! There's a wounded man up the trail. Preston's with him. Sergeant Preston's wounded? No, lady. The other man. You didn't say where they are. Which trail? How far? The Kelly Trail. You'll find them by the first spring. Come on. as fast as possible, Sergeant. Speed's pretty bad. Looks like this was made by a 38. Yours? Yes. He's one of the mail robbers. And now Dad's supposed to save him. One of the thieves who stole the money for our clinic. I recovered most of the money, Lucy. He tried to shoot you first, didn't he, Sergeant? Well, yes. Will you need me anymore, Doc? No. Lucy and I'll manage. He'll live. Where are you going? I have some unfinished business. Your clinic included. Proper, Lucy, please. If we can make it, old fellow, we'll save a lot of time. That's Preston's dog. He's smart and he's tough. The only way you'll get in here is to kill him. Preston's dog, eh? <laughs> It'll be a pleasure. Well, well. Aren't you a pretty sight? Never mind that. Get that dog. I've been waiting for this all day. Where is he? I can't see him. He's a little to your left of the window. That's too close. You'd better shoot him through the wall. Well, how? I... I can't see him. I'll tell you. See that chink in the second log from the bottom? Yeah. I see it now. Shoot through there. You'll get him. I wouldn't if I were you, Meacham. Good boy, King. Who got the credit, Preston? You are the dog. You get what's coming to you, Meacham. That's the main point. Inside. Well, I guess that's everything. What about my horses? Yours and Constable Gage's horses are being brought in, Jack. They were found grazing at the foot of Summit. Well, you did a first-rate job, Sergeant. Good job, Sergeant. Yes, it's a lot of money. Yes, sir. Did you find Dad's letter? It was his life savings. $10,000. Yeah, I took this from Meacham when I searched him. Said he spent some of the money for supplies and horses. We can fix that. Here's my contribution to Doc's clinic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dad, look! Well, it's too late to catch the riverboat, but I've arranged with Jack Hart to pack your mail and gold overland to Juneau. Hooray! 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 Well, King, this case is closed.
Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police with Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog breaking the trail in the relentless pursuit of lawbreakers in the wild days of the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush as Sergeant Preston with his wonder dog Yukon King meets the challenge of the Yukon. This is the Yukon, the territory patrolled by Sergeant Preston. A territory where the insatiable lust for gold tortured the souls of those in high places as well as low. Of a government administrator as well as a sourdough down on his luck. Midsummer in Crystal Springs, a lawless mining community, one of hundreds spread throughout the Yukon. Well, that's quite an operation you've set up, considering you're on doubtful land. What do you mean, doubtful, Sergeant? Well, you know what Crown land is, Mr. Rowland. But of course. Every other gold claim is reserved for the Crown by law. But surely you do not think this is such a claim. When I passed through here last season, it was. But it was cleared by the gold commissioners of these. They are the responsible ones. Well, I'll have to check into that. Good day, Mr. Rowland. Nothing wrong with your memory, Sergeant. That particular section was Crown Land a year ago. But according to these records, it's been resurveyed and declared open. Well, thanks, Frank. You have stumbled on something that we have been trying to keep secret, at least until we can step in and catch the man responsible. You mean the Dominion Surveyor, Frank Johnson? It goes up higher than that, Sergeant. I mean the gold commissioner himself. The gold commissioner, Gordon? Right, but since he's appointed by the government in Ottawa, I have no power to arrest or discharge him. Is there nothing you can do, sir? Something is being done. Ottawa is sending on a new commissioner by the name of John Everett. He's arriving on the Yukon Bell from St. Michael at the end of this week. Hmm, I see. The reason for all this secrecy is that we want to catch Gordon red-handed before he can change his books and cover his tracks. You're a shrewd man, Sergeant. And now that you're aware of the situation, we do need you. As a Mountie, you can move about without attracting undue attention. So I'd appreciate it if you will uncover the miners who are working for Gordon. I'll do the best I can, sir. I know you will. Good day, sir. Good day. Now that they brought the Mounties in here, I don't like it. Not one bit. Get a hold of yourself, Riggs. But what about your replacement? You'll never have time to straighten out this mess before he arrives. Mr. John Everett is not going to arrive, my boy. But you're mistaken, Mr. Gordon. He's on the Yukon Bell. The boat's already on the way. Nevertheless, Mr. John Everett is not going to arrive in Dawson. And Ottawa can't possibly get another man up before September. By that time, we will have stripped the claims across the border to Alaska and be living like kings. A few days later, Sergeant Preston arrived in the mining town of Crystal Springs on his new assignment. I'll be exposed, and we'll all face prison. I don't know. Murder. That's an ugly word, Martin. I should rather like to think of it 
as expediency. A fancy name doesn't hide the fact that it's murder. I don't want any part of it. Well, if you alone were involved, I wouldn't mind. But we're all in it. At a time like this, you should think of the common good. The common good? How can you talk like that? Four common thieves, that's what we are, let's face it. But let's not become four murderers. Oh, shut up, Martin. You can't turn back, Martin. When you came to work here, you started on a one-way road. There's no turning back. Well, Martin? I have a family I want to get back to in the States. That's right. You're being smart. Get on with it, Gordon. Tell us what we ought to do. The Yukon Bell gets in at Ryan's Landing the morning of the 24th. I understand that John Everett, the new commissioner, is going to get off there. He's going to come the rest of the way to Dawson by horse. He's going to start by looking at some of those claims that we've been working down there. You know what that means. The 24th tomorrow. Right. That means that you men will have to take care of him before he reaches the first claim. We'll never get away with it. Oh, we will if it looks like robbery. Should be simple. There'll be you three men against Everett and his guide. Wait for him just before he reaches that rocky section near the Bear No Claim. That is a good place. Let's get going. <laughs> Stop him! Sergeant. Not having any trouble, are you, gentlemen? Not in the least. Why should you ask? I thought I heard a shot. Oh, that. I was just pegging away at a deer. Thought I might be lucky and get myself a delicious morsel to take back to Dawson. Beggar got away in the trees. Weren't there four of you? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. The other man uh, went on into the woods. He was sure I hit the deer. It's a good idea. I wouldn't like to think of a wounded deer in there somewhere. We'll take care of it, Sergeant. Good day, gentlemen. Come on, King. <laughs> Preston swallowed my story. Follow him and make sure. But what about you? I have to get back to Dawson. It's bad enough that he saw me out here. You hit Martin. What if he dies? So much the better. That'll bind us all more tightly together. Get going. This is what I suspected. We were shooting at a man and hit him. And 
trying to stop the flow of blood with his handkerchief. Come on, King. lost the Mountie. No, I am sure the Mountie did not believe that story about the deer. You think he's tracking Martin? That's just what I think. Curtis, look. Martin's horse? No, he went in further down. This must be the Monty. The tracks Preston was following led to a way station, one of the many cabins in the Yukon maintained and supplied by the Northwest Mounted Police for the convenience, comfort, and need of travelers. here just in time, King. This man's in a bad way. And a bad wound, too. He's a doctor. We'll do what we can to stop the bleeding first. Uh, Easy, King. Uh, uh, Quiet, King. Trapped by the crooked gold commissioner's henchmen, Sergeant Preston knew more than his own life was at stake. Preston had to stay alive to help the wounded man and thwart the scheme to steal gold-bearing crown land. Raise up your hands, Preston. This man's been badly wounded. You heard me. Raise them up high. Better not try no tricks with this dog. I can pull this trigger on you before he reaches me. This is one fine dog you got here. You better send him home before I shoot him. Go home, King. Go on, King. Get this gun, Curtis. You can't beat the law by killing me, Roland. Eventually, you'll be tracked down. You must be go crazy, Sergeant. Nobody is going to track us down because you are going to die by accident. Get his handcuffs. Cross over your hands behind you. Cross over your hands. Put them on him. What about your wounded friend here? He needs a doctor or he'll die. Thank you for the information, Sergeant. It will save us much trouble if he does. Let's go. Fourteen. Twenty-four. You can't bail. Fortune. This is the place. We will throw him in the mine shaft and make it look like an accident. Get off, Monty. Do we have to kill him? Fool, he would be trailing us forever. Maybe Jake didn't tell him anything. It make no difference. He would know by tomorrow. He would put two and two together when he finds the new commissioner is murdered. Give me the handcuffs keys. We take them off and make it look right. I will do it myself. Get hold of yourself, man. 
Give me his gun. This is not good. We fix this. Put in the handcuffs. There, no. Everything is all right. Let's get it over with. Let's get out of here. Come back here. It is better we continue the way we were going. It would be bad to bring tracks to this place and back again. Let's ride. We have much to do yet. Against orders, King followed Preston, keeping out of sight, a safe distance behind. Get Rex King, he can't be far. Constable Moore, I'm in luck. What are you doing here? Constable Davis and I stopped here to spend the night in this warehouse. We found him. He was dead when we arrived. I sent Davis back to Crystal Springs for a pack horse. How about you? You look like you've really been through it. I have, but I'm all right now. This is one of the miners I was watching. Happens to be a confidential case where I tell you about it. Seems he had some sort of falling out with his fellow conspirators and was shot. Thought I could make him talk, so I followed him. And I was followed here myself and surprised. I searched him. Those are his things. Jacob Martin. Picture of his wife and kids. What makes a man like that turn bad, Moore? I don't know. Though I think you might be interested in something he wrote on the head of his bunk. What's that? Some figure scratched in charcoal. There's no doubt about what Martin wrote it. He has charcoal stains on his fingers. Quite an effort for a dying man. Why be 1424? That mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Why 
Why B? Why B? Why B? Yukon Bell. Could be, but how about the uh, 1424? Well, it could very well be a date. Tomorrow's the 24th. But 14? Eh, that's got me stumped. How about 14 Mile Rapids? No connection with the Yukon Bell. The rapids are far up river above Dawson. The Bell Plaza River only below Dawson. 14. Wait a minute. The islands of the Yukon, they're numbered. That's right, they are. 14. That's right opposite Ryan Landing. Why would the poor guy be trying to tell us about Yukon Bell and Ryan's Landing? Because the steamer's stopping for wood there tomorrow morning, and a certain man is disembarking at that time. And we'd better be there, Constable, at that time, or there's very likely going to be another murder. And we've got a long trip ahead of us. Two Mounties rode toward Brian's Landing as fast as their horses could travel. John Everett. Mounties. Yes, and one of them is Preston. Let's get out of here. You stay here with them, where you too, King. I want those two. in the name of the crown. Turn around. I'll get going. Subordinate went wrong. They didn't get Everett. Only wounded him. Preston has arrested both Roland and Curtis. What'll we do, sir? What'll we do? Surrender. You're both under arrest. Come on, Gordon. My congratulations, Sergeant. You certainly did a fine job. Well, thank you, sir. Constable Moore and King were a great help. Has the new commissioner felt like going over Gordon's books as yet? I've been helping him. Been at it all day. My worst suspicions are correct, Sergeant. Gordon transferred Crown land to those miners for 50% of the take. He'll go to jail for 20 years. Well, perhaps not, sir. And uh, why not, Sergeant? Well, both the prisoners have testified that it was Gordon who shot and killed Jake Martin. Oh, I see. That means the gallows. Yes, it does. Well, King, as far as we're concerned, this case is closed.
now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.